So in this video, we're going to use the elementary row operations that we just talked about to solve the matrix. Um, so say we're given this matrix here, and say it's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, uh, let's say it's equal to negative 10. In the next row, we'll say it's negative 2, um, negative 4, negative 5, uh, equal to negative 19. And for the final row, the third row, we'll say it's negative 1, 2, 2, and equal to 3. So the goal uh, using the elementary row operations is we want to be able to get that staircase that we were talking about that has zeros all below it, uh, for, uh, leading, following the leading entries. So if we draw on our staircase like this, we want to eventually get these to become our leading entries and these to be zeros below them. So what we want to do first is it's easiest to try and eliminate um, below the first leading entry, eliminate these ones first, and then once we have these as zeros, then we can consider trying to fix uh, fix this one to become a zero as well. So first of all, let's look at this. Let's look at this uh, middle row here. If we want this, actually, you know what? The easiest thing to do before we even do that is let's get the lead, the top leading entry to be a one, and that'll just make our lives a lot easier. So let's uh, let's do our first row elementary row operation and we'll say we're just going to multiply the first row um, by negative 1. So negative r or negative 1 times r1 will equal this new matrix. Um, so we're only going to look at the first row so it'll be 1, 2, 3 and positive 10 and now the bottom rows, the bottom two rows will stay exactly the same. Uh, negative 2, negative 4, plus 5 negative 19, that was negative 5, uh, negative 1, 2, 2, and 3. Okay, so now what we want to do is, it's just easier to work with if this leading, this top leading one is a positive, and you guys will see of that later. Now, so what's going to happen here is if we want to turn this into a 0, we're going to have to add, well, we could either add 2 times negative of r3, or the easier way is just if we added twice, uh, two times r1, this would become a zero, and we'll see what the rest happens. We don't really care about the rest, but we'll see what happens. So we'll write this here, and we're going to say this is going to be two times r1 plus r2. Right? That's the operation we're going to be doing. So now remember, we're working on the second row, so the first row is going to stay the same. One, two, three, and a ten. Now, our second row, so 2 times, here, let's look at here, 2 times 1 plus negative 2 is 0. And we'll move to the second part, second variable. So now we'll look at this, and we have 2 times 2 plus negative 4 is also going to be 0. And 2 times 3 plus negative 5 is going to be 1. And now we have to consider this part too, so 2 times 10 plus negative 19 is going to equal 1. And we didn't do anything to the third row, so that's going to stay the same again. Negative 1, 2, 2, and 3. Okay, so we accomplished that first goal. We wanted this to be a 0. Now, let's, let's try and turn this one into a 0 as well. So, next step, um, what we're going to want to do is add row 1 plus row 3, and we're going to work on row 3 now. So let's write this here. We'll have R1 plus R3. Okay. So our matrix, the row 1 will stay the same because we're not actually, we're not changing that one. 1, 2, 3, and a 10. Now the middle row, we're not working on the middle row, so that stays the same too. So we have 0, 0, 1, 1. Now, r1 plus r3, so 1 plus negative 1 is 0, 2 plus 2 is 4, and 3 plus 2 is 5, and 10 plus 3 is 13. Okay, so now we're going to look at our leading variables here in each row. We have, we have one here, here, and here. So our staircase, if we tried to draw a staircase, well, we don't really have one. We have something that looks more like this following your zeros. But if you can see this, we have two zeros here and one zero here. So if we just interchanged these rows, we're going to get a staircase. So watch this. Our next operation 
is just going to be R2, R2 um, switched with R3. So the row one stays the same because we're not we're not considering that one right now. One, two, three, and a ten. Now when we switch the rows two and three, we'll bring row three up. So we have zero, four, five, and thirteen. And below it we have what used to be row two is now row three, zero, zero, one, one. Okay, perfect. So let's look at this. We have our staircase under our leading variables, and this matrix, this uh, matrix is now in row echelon form. So we can solve this by back substitution now. So let's write what the system of linear equations is that this represents. And so we have, let's see, we have x plus 2y plus 3z is equal to 10. Now we have 4y, 4y plus 5z, it's an ugly z, 5z is equal to 13. And we have z is equal to 1. z is equal to 1. All right, so let's just solve these for the variables. So starting with 1, we have, we already know z is equal to 1, because that's pretty much given to us right here. Now, if we plug in this 1 into the next equation, we're going to have 4y plus 5 times 1 is equal to 13. And this will give us, when we reduce further, we'll have 4y is equal to 8. And that will give us y is equal to 2. So now we're going to plug 2 and 1 into these variables up here. And so we'll say that x plus 2 times 2 plus 3 times 1 is equal to 10. And when we reduce this, we have 4 plus 3, so we have x plus 7 is equal to 10. And we find that, in fact, x is equal to 3. So the solution to this matrix, or the solution to this system of linear equations that it represents, I'll write it down here solution is equal to, in vector form, uh, is equal to the vector 3, 2, 1. Now, in the next video, um, we're going to use the same numbers, and we're going to do what's, we're going to reduce it to what's called reduced row echelon form, and we're going to find that you can solve these types of problems without even making the system of linear equations by using the elementary row operations.